Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. I am Kyle once again and we are in the little satellite dish relay tracking station place thing. Because I completed a couple of contracts to put some satellites into orbit in between this and the last episode just because, uh, not that it's super time consuming, but it's stuff you've seen me do before. It's not all that entertaining. And it got us some cash, which is always helpful stuff. So I'll go through exactly which, uh, I think it was this guy way up here. Yeah, that guy. Uh, there was a shorter one. Maybe it was, uh, it was either, hold on, it was either this one down here. I think it might have been this one. It might have been, that, that might have been it. That one. And then there was one around Le Moon. Uh, no, not that one. Maybe it was that one. Yeah, it was this one. This one we put in. Relay dish number six. So, for quick reference, we completed... Satellite, 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 and then I also did a quick little flight that all I had to do was recover material study and mystery goo from low flight over curb, and so all I did was pull out the bumblebee one more time, do a little lap again, gather some science this time around, and uh, that's why we're at 26.4, a whopping number, which leads to the next segment of what we need to do. Two big things to help us gather science, because we still need to hit the 45 marker so we can get that bigger fairing that we talked about last time. Number one, if we upgrade the astronaut complex, only 150k, easy to do, not quick decision. This will allow us to get Kerbals to disembark. Oh, no, wait. Uh, uh, it'll allow us to do EVAs. That's what I meant. EVAs. So now Astronaut Complex is in here going to take a little over three days to complete. No worries, though. What we can do, though, to also gather science, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before, is we can do a very, 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 very simple mission that requires very little thought or energy. What I'm going to do first is build out... Uh, basically all of the science I want to put on this, which is just about everything. So I want to make sure I actually do have the materials bay. Okay, just a very simple probe that has to be able to go out a long distance, one of each thing, so that we can uh, send and transmit uh, Thermometer and barometer data. We're going to try and return the mystery goo and the scientific uh, material study bay. And this has a lot of delta V for one very, very, very particular reason. We're going to merge this specifically with the rocket we've been using to launch all these other satellites as well. Now this payload's a little bit bigger, and I believe all this is probably out of order. But let's get this all organized so that we can make sure the delta V is correct. All right, this is a good handy dandy excuse to put on some uh, big old giant boosters on the side of this. This is the first time we're using the thumpers. I think this will be a good excuse for it because we need a lot of Delta B. We are trying to get this probe to get kicked all the way out of the Kerbin system so we can be into solar space, which will actually be an area where we can gather some easy, quick science. And there's a little trick we can use to just turn around return to Kerbin and actually gather the science directly with the recovery. All right, we lead off today with the boomerang. Now the boomerang is gonna be using two boosters uh, on the side here, the thumpers that we have never used before. So these are untested generation one parts. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the engines all in the first stage here, and I'm not gonna release the clamps until I see everything firing. If everything's firing, we'll go ahead and go. If not, we'll consider it a test. So. Without further ado, we're going to go in five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And just as expected, we get a little wet test of our Kodiak, which is operating fine. Uh, but our boosters did not. So that's good to know. We'll go ahead and shut those down. And we're going to do a recovery. You see, we're already establishing a better workflow, so now I can make sure I'm not letting rockets go when everything's not firing. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll actually go in here and I'm gonna replace this part, this engine we just used, because we have one now. So I can go ahead and apply that. It'll reuse that generation nine one we just used. We have a tested true function, so we know that this engine has been tested and works. I'm gonna go ahead and put the little shield over the edge of it. I think that looks kind of cool for one that's in the atmosphere. And then as far as these ones go, I'm actually gonna discard the thumpers. I don't wanna keep those ones that didn't work. We're just gonna go with two brand new generation two ones, and uh, that should hopefully get us a much better result. Uh, the other thing I can do is do that with probably all the engines. So I can go through, uh, I guess, uh, well, no, we can just keep the, 
these newer ones, they should be pretty dang good with how many times we've used those engines. I also just realized I don't have a parachute on this, so I should probably snatch one of those onto the top of there, just because we are planning to return this. And then additionally, I was kind of looking at the numbers again, and I think I would like a little bit more kick onto this thing. Not so much for thrust uh, with the first stage with these boosters, but after the first stage, because our main engine here just doesn't quite have enough to really get us going after that point. I also want to make sure I have enough control, so just to be overly cautious, I'm going to attach a few of these additional tanks on, and then I'm going to utilize one of my favorite engines in the entire game, the swivel. Uh, I need to see what the total burn time is on each one of these stages once I get it figured out here. All right, it looks like the boosters will burn out first. We get a little additional thrust, but mostly the reason I love the swivels is because they're one of the earliest gimbling engines. Then we can actually put on the hemispherical, uh, we can color them too. Oh, I like the way that looks. And then covering up the engines down here. Sweet. All right, slightly improved. Oh, those things are going to wobble a little bit. A little auto strut real quick. Nobody saw it. All right, the new and improved, slightly improved boomerang. We're going to go ahead and test the engines out first. So we're going to, again, let them fire and then see and make sure everything's going. Looks like we're good to go. This thing's going to accelerate pretty quickly. I'm going to drop thrust down just a smidge. Not too much, though. And these first ones to ditch will be the solid rocket boosters. And then right before they run out of fuel, we're going to actually crank our thrust all the way back up on the rest of the rocket. Coming up pretty soon. I'm going to give it a little bit of a tilt. Ditch those boosters. And then again, I don't care really what direction this ends up going. The uh, inclination is not important. So I'm just going to let it go the direction that it's already kind of tilting here. We do have a failure on a tank. It is losing oxidizer rapidly. That is not good. Ditch those. Very, very minimal control here. We're gonna we're gonna really start tilting if we can. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, there's not a lot of control on this thing. We lose those gimbals, we kinda lose everything. There's a very, 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 very tiny reaction wheel on our probe. There's always flaws with something we build. I'd rather have it be this than, you know, not being able to get to space. Because realistically, this thing's got a lot of delta V. And all it has to do is just keep firing until it leaves Kerbin's system. Do my best to try and get as close to the prograde marker as I can. Looks like we're just drifting now, which is not bad also, because we're just kind of, well, we're really off the prograde marker. That's part of the problem. Get rid of that. It's just extra weight at this point. We are almost out of fuel, and when that happens, then we can transition to the, the vacuum engines. This has gimbal. Okay, now we're just gonna, gonna burn hard. Hard, 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 hard to horizontal. And uh, honestly, we're gonna pray just a little bit that this thing works. Testing out some new antennas here too. So they'll get some time in the field. Or technically a higher generation because we already had uh, to try and keep burning prograde if I can. Because I should be able to increase time to Apoapsis. This is a really, really crummy launch. Alright, we're gonna stage. And then we're gonna figure out exactly where we're at here. See if we can get this to orbit. Well, it'll get to orbit. Question is, where does it go after that? Because what I'm gonna do is just to uh, literally burn this thing completely out of urban system is the goal. That says 1742 and we have 1737 allegedly in the tank. So using just these tiny, tiny ants. Gonna try and orient ourselves as close to there as possible. And crank up the main engine. And then we're just gonna burn. Burn, burn, baby, burn. Cross our fingers a little bit. Let me check the... ISP 330, and these are 
Okay, I want to shut down two of these. So that way we take advantage of just the better ISP on the main engine. See if that stretches us a little further. We're just going to keep burning prograde. Not even worry about a maneuver node. And if this thing can't make it back to Kerbin, that's a sacrifice I can make. As long as it gets out far enough to where we can get external science. As we get closer to where the moon is, though, we might we might be able to take advantage and see if we get an encounter here, actually. Actually, we're on way too high an inclination. What am I saying? That would never happen. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, and we got it. I shut it off. I have one meter per second left, but that's that's okay. We'll just say this was the closest success we've ever had in the history of our space program. Well, great. That's going to happen in eight days and ten hours. We'll just go ahead and create a little alarm here. Set that alarm. Did that set it automatically? It did. So eventually, eight days, ten hours. Sweet. So we did have an oxidizer leak on our main engine. Uh, which was probably part of the reason this was actually really close. And that was the initial ignition failure before. So, that's pretty cool. We'll be able to get some good science. All right, and another quick way we can make some cash and some science is going to be to do some of these ScanSat satellites. So we've got one here to do an orbital spectrometer scan. And this is going to give us biome information of Kerbin specifically. We've also got one that we can do at the moon. So we'll pretty much just reuse the same satellite for each, just with probably a different launch vehicle. Make sure we got enough delta v on the moon version so i present to you the brightwood one this has a couple of uh, added new benefits one we're putting a little bit of a shatterstone theme to it two we've uh, i've added more of the uh, where are they at whoa that's an engine in the face i've added more twitches at the bottom so hopefully we have some better gimbal control as well as the additional fins so that way we uh, don't do the floppy floppy fall over that uh, some previous rockets may have done additionally i also figured out how to add my own flags into the game so look at that we're officially channel themed i have done zero tests on this so hopefully uh works out pretty well yeah there we go probably bring the thrust down a little bit and this actually has to go uh north so let's make sure we set that tone fairly early because again because this is a scanning satellite we're going to make sure that this goes into a polar orbit uh we could, whoa no 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 didn't mean to do that meant to take the thrust up thank you there we go all right let's go ahead and ooh, let's try and line this up a little bit straighter to start with i don't want to go lightly to the uh, west as we're going north should be a pretty easy launch so as long as this thing stays in control which it looks like it's doing a very good job of so i'm going to let it actually just kind of follow the aerodynamics we'll let the fins do all the hard work of directing us in the right direction here at this uh, low altitude we'll bring the thrust down because i want it to start tilting over utilizing that gravity turn as early as possible kind of and we're doing really well actually in fact, with the thrust all the way down here, our time to apoapsis is still going up. This is a much better design. Uh, additional twitches on the bottom were definitely the right decision. All that extra gimbal is giving a lot of control, and the main engines will still do the bulk of the work. We'll still get the bulk of the delta V benefit from those. I want to bring this down even further, because I'm not tilting over as much as I want to still. I don't want to oversteer this thing. Now I guess we're actually... Uh, at a point where aerodynamics don't play as much of a role, our fins are going to be a lot less useful. Oh, come on, twitches. All right, I think uh, I think now we can probably go ahead and drive the thrust back up. Keep it nice and high, and then we'll start to take this a bit more horizontal, too. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. We're going to lose this stage. And then I have a different second stage here. I'm utilizing the... Uh, this is the swivel, so it has a gimbal-controlled engine. Uh, let's go ahead and ditch the fairing as well. We have a gimbal-controlled engine, but still, uh, still lots of thrust because uh, I feel like the last couple stages uh, or last couple engines I've used for second stages, not quite as good as I wanted them to be on the thrust side of things. Go, uh, go ahead and just take this straight horizontal, and I did put the thrust limiter down to 50% on this because the thrust was already so high. And uh, I wanted this to act more like a second stage engine. Really more for the 
decent ISP that this has. 320 is not too bad, but it's still way, 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 way more powerful than the Pug. So we'll let this one burn out momentarily. Oh, what the heck? Why is this not in the right spot? Apparently my staging was in the wrong order. Okay, let's go ahead and get everything extended on this bed boy. We got two solar panels because the uh, spectrometer here, um, not spectrometer, multi-spectral scanner, I guess is the correct term, utilizes a bit more electricity than uh, some of the other machines we've used in the past. And then I've got a little bit higher antenna because I want to test it out a little bit more. And it's what's going to be utilized on the Mooner version of this same craft. This is a 1243.8 meters per second burn. Easy enough, as we have over 1600 delta V. So this was a uh, this is a pretty good calculation as far as uh, getting to orbit. So what we'll need to do is take this exact same vehicle. We will have to add probably stretching the fuel tank. So we'll probably add a fuel tank to this specific portion of it on the actual satellite to get to the moon and circularize. We will probably also stretch the second stage. And then the first stage, in order to get a little bit more delta V and maintain the thrust, I might add some either side boosters or I've got an idea to have some separating, separating, separating boosters in the form of the same uh, engine that we've utilized for the main engine, just have two side boosters. So it'll be like a, a heavy version of the same rocket. Uh, I might Am I past the burn mark? I don't think I am. I was not paying attention. Did I, did I pass it? I think I did. Oh, okay. Well, I think this thing should still get to orbit. Let's just tilt this up a little bit just in case. We should be fine. I'm not worried. We got plenty of altitude. No, we're still on our way up, so we're not... Unless I just had that maneuver node in the wrong spot. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Pretty similar structure. Actually, almost identical structure. The last couple... Uh, vehicles we've done. I've utilized the bigger battery on this one, again, because I think this uh, experiment is going to require a little bit more electricity, both to transfer the data and just to run the system. So more solar panels in that sense too. Same four, uh, four engine structure on the back of the ants. So we have uh, still pretty decent thrust for a small little satellite like this. And then as soon as this thing uh, gets fairly close, doesn't have to be exact again. Okay. We are in a comfortable 159 by 200 kilometer orbit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is orient the satellite right about there and then we'll rotate. So that way our solar panels are in a vertical orientation. So that way they can always rotate and see the sun. And then last but certainly not least, we're gonna grab our spectrometer and start the scanning. So now we'll start to get some biome data, I think. Let's make sure that this is, uh, yeah, it's actively got a scan going, so that's good. I'll just keep it at that orbit. I'm happy. It'll take some time, uh, but uh, that's okay. It always does take time to do this sort of thing, but we'll start to get some actual biome data, which will be cool. Uh, we already have a full terrain map of Kerbin in the low resolution version. Uh, we can go terrain to biome, and then we'll start to get data here speed this up and start to see what that looks like. Yep, there we go. Flying over the ocean, so it's all just coming in blue, but we'll start to get some ice caps at the top there. Excellent. Let's go. We'll kind of watch this do one full rotation. I think, I think this experiment actually doesn't do anything if you're not in the sunlight. Yeah. So whenever the satellite passes on the dark side, anything that's in shadow, it won't actually pick anything up which is a really interesting little kind of challenge feature of it, I guess. Once we get back on the light side, though, however, we'll start to pick up the South Pole data there. There it is. And then as we come back around the light side that we're on here, we'll gather another strip. So this will take probably twice as long as a normal kind of scanning mission does, because again, uh, we can only take advantage of it when it's in daylight. We'll have to wait for Kerbin to spin while this thing is also doing the orbit. So we'll come back to that at a later point. Give it some time. We are only 4% of the way there. So not only are these missions going to provide a good chunk of cash for the actual contracts, uh, they're actually going to 
provide some science so they kind of have dual purpose. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the old adage of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, first and foremost, let's make sure we change the name here to the Brightwood 2 because that's what it's going to end up being. This is the real important stuff in KSP is making sure that your nomenclature is in order and everything looks good. If it looks good, it doesn't matter if you crash it into the ground. All right, so pretty simple thing. We're just going to drop this down out of the way slightly, go back into the fuel tanks, grab the same donut, and then add a second one in there. Uh, we shouldn't need to change our fairing. Nope, still everything's still fitting inside of there, even with that dish. Perfect. That increases the delta V of our last stage uh, by about 900. So we're at about 1600 on that last stage with the last vehicle adding, doubling the, the tank, fuel tanks, at about another 900. Doesn't, doesn't double it. That's not, that's not how the math works, but it does give us a little bit extra there, which realistically might get us to the moon, but I want to be nice and safe uh, and uh, over-engineer this as one does. Um, oh, I don't want to lose my tower. I keep my tower there. We'll take this fuel tank as well. We're going to double its size. And I'm going to use the, the white one there. Actually, let's see what colors we got here. Um, let's go, yeah, let's go with the greenish ones. Those look cool for the second stage. Just like so. All right, then if we look at those additions, it actually decreases the overall thrust to weight ratio of our first stage. And the first stage is about as weak as I would want it to be. From a delta V standpoint, though, I feel like we need a bit extra. So we're going to raise this up. Let's reattach this guy the important things of making sure we've got little cool towers holding our, our ship together all right and then what i'm gonna do this lower section i'm gonna rotate that so our images are on the side here we're gonna grab the radial decouplers position them in the middle actually before i do that because i don't want to duplicate them we're gonna alt click so we duplicate that put that there and now, when we grab, let's grab it here, okay, we'll go like that, and then what I'm going to do, get rid of those fins, and displace this up a bit, even with the side of that, and then I'm going to, oh, we actually need to, let's, let's ditch the name on the side, we'll keep the, the flags and everything, that's fine. And then all we have to do is grab the decoupler, do symmetry, and then now when we place this, we'll get a nice, sweet, triple, heavy version, heavy booster version of this rocket. All right, and then I'm going to change the thrust of the central engine to 50% because that way we actually see the staging outcome on this. And that's going to extend our, uh, our bottom stages here by quite a bit. So we're going to end up with... Uh, a good amount of thrust, 1.6 thrust to weight ratio, and then a total delta V of 8,400, which should be more than enough. I think this is significantly overpowered, especially because we add a large hemispherical tank on there. Uh, what does that do? Actually, that, that doesn't do much at all. It gives us a little bit of aerodynamics, I think, but uh, overall, not very impressive when it comes to the actual numbers. If I make it more pointy... Would, do you think this would be more aerodynamic? It would be more aerodynamic. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll add uh, little nose cones to them. Oh, that looks absolutely ridiculous, but I love it. So we, we've officially labeled this as the Brightwood Heavy Launch Vehicle, I guess. The actual satellite should have a different name, but we can uh, we can think of that later. All right, then the important things. Got to add some uh, structural stability. Boom, and just like that, we're going to give this bad boy a go. We should probably also do some quick auto strutting. Just kind of do the top and the bottoms, I think, are a good way to do it. And then the other cool thing, because this central second age stage engine, we had 50% last time, we can just crank it up because we do have a little bit more ahead of us. Uh, it's actually a lot of thrust to weight ratio. Maybe we go 75. That's still two point. Let's keep it at two. Where does that put us? It's at two. 7%. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and construct this bad boy. All right, let's do a little check down here nice and low to make sure all these engines fire up. Make sure SAS is on, engines at full throttle, firing up. And detach the clamps. We are good to go. We're going to bring thrust down a bit because this thing is pretty dang strong. 
It's only going to get better and better with these side boosters. So the time frame it's taken... Um, oh, our multispectral scan of Kerbin is done. So the time it's taken for us to build this in the uh, VAB with Kerbal construction time, uh, we've actually finished that experiment, so we should go gather the science for that at some point here pretty quick. The other thing that's going to be happening soon is we're going to send this on its way to the moon, obviously, after it gets into orbit. However, uh, before it gets to the moon, we are actually also going to have the boomerang escaping out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. So when that happens, uh, we'll just kind of switch right over to the other one. I'm going to uh, take thrust all the way back up. And we're just going to follow the nice easy trajectory here provided by the prograde marker going through the atmosphere. Oh, we're getting a little crazy actually. Maybe I throw SAS back on. There we go. Ooh, this thing is a little hard to control actually. Those twitches might be providing a little too much extra control. Uh, but we are going to lose our boosters here pretty soon. And I'm going to bring up this main engine, and as soon as we stage the side boosters, we're going to crank the thrust all the way back to up to 100% on the center stage. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this pretty far too. Our apoapsis is already insanely high. We'll kind of let this thing sit, pick up, pick up some lateral velocity here. We are just about ready to stage these side boosters. I'm going to go ahead and crank the center engine all the way back up. Ditch the sides. Look at that. Beautiful separation. 62 kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this a little bit further. Yeah, we're, we're going to do fantastic with this first stage. This thing is very, very powerful. We might have to keep this in mind as maybe this is the kind of structure we use for our crewed vehicle that we're going to try and actually put a Kerbal into orbit. But we want to make sure I gather all the science and everything so we can continue our moon exploratory program. We're trying to remember to send and land some probes out there. Okay, second stage, or I should say this is kind of the third stage. This uh, this might actually be what takes us to orbit, which means it'll also act partially as a kick stage to the moon, which is good. This is this is pretty over-engineered. Let's go ahead and ditch our fairing. Should have done that a while ago. And then we're gonna orient the spacecraft. Oh man, gimbal is a little excessive. Okay, orienting the spacecraft sideways so that we can. And our solar panels so they're already in a good optimum position. Let's get our antenna opened up. Just a like a so. Oh no, why didn't you stay out? Stand antenna, please. Thank you. Stay out there. Good boy. Okay. Uh, I was not paying attention, and we have a 511 kilometer apoapsis, so it's uh, it's a little further than I wanted it to go going to be in quite a big uh, parking orbit here. So let's go ahead and just set up that maneuver node. And I don't need to circularize this. That's fine, actually. 210 kilometers on the periapsis is fine. Three hundred ninety-six on the burn. Eight hundred and fourteen left in the tank. Yeah, that should give us a pretty good idea that this uh, this rocket should should be something we could utilize pretty consistently. I don't I don't know what the cost was. I didn't actually look at the price when before I built it. Really pay attention to that. All right, then we'll just go ahead and speed up until we get to our node. Twelve point two second burn. A couple minutes away. Get there nice and quick. Zippity doo! Crap! I went past it again. Seems to be a uh, consistent problem I have. But nice, easy, quick burn. Much, much more fluid than the silly pug. I'm, I'm glad I've gotten rid of that philosophy. Probably won't use the pug unless we put it on some smaller probes ever again. And then very simply, as we have done in the past, we got to target the moon. Set as target. This is all becoming very, very consistently easy things to do. I'm going to set up the burn probably right about there. Should be a good spot. 
flyby of the moon. And yeah, we can go ahead and adjust this quite a bit. Oops, no, I want my maneuver node. Oh, I don't want to add a maneuver node. I want the one I've already got. No, 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 I didn't want to warp. What are you doing? Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Great, now the node's in four minutes. Great. Give me maneuver node. Oh man, the one time I don't actually want to be getting a nice equatorial encounter. And I get one. I wanted to have a big south or north pole trajectory. Buckets. Alright, well we'll just bring it in close for now there. And then uh, we'll adjust it halfway through. Okay, so this, um, well actually what I should say is this actually isn't going to be what takes us there. What I'm going to do is uh, ditch this this stage down here. So we're going to burn this until it's probably got, I would say, 150 delta B remaining. So we'll get a little bit of a kick out of it. We'll go out to Apoapsis, burn retrograde, bring it underneath the atmosphere. And then from there, we'll uh, detach the probe, burn the probe prograde. And then after that gets back into a stable orbit, we'll burn the rest of the way. So like I said, more or less gonna let this burn till we hit those a little far, 135 left. Okay, so we can get rid of this maneuver. We're gonna come out to Apoapsis. I don't really, I don't actually need to make a maneuver, uh, but we will go all the way out to that point and I actually need to put the relays back on. So I believe that's what I'm flying. So right there, we should be at 1,000 kilometers. Look at that. All right, so from here, this is this is also we just keep the uh, the atmosphere, the uh, orbital low low carbon orbit kind of clean. I don't want to have all these extra pieces floating around. They just kind of clutter up everything. So we're gonna burn this. Uh, should have enough delta V to get this under the atmosphere. I would think at this high of a apoapsis, I'd have some benefits from. That uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen. 10. No, 104 kilometers. Well, that's not good. That means uh, this thing is not going to come crashing down back into the atmosphere. And there's no orbital decay in Kerb Kerbal Space Program. Um, yeah, so this actually, I think, makes the fourth bit of debris I've left in, in orbit. I started counting them. And I'm a little disappointed in myself for not uh, planning a little bit better here. We'll detach this, and then we're going to have to start planning missions in the future to kind of utilize other satellites and go and rendezvous with these things, and then uh, drag them back into the atmosphere. I know you can go to the tracking station, and you can just literally delete them, but I've always felt like that's... Uh, until you at least show like that you know how to clean up the atmosphere, it feels like cheating to me. If you have to do it, though, it's not cheating. You can do it. I, I, I'm okay with you doing it. But I at least want to show that I can clean up one of those pieces. And then once I clean up one of them, then uh, then maybe I'll just start deleting them from that point. All right, let's go ahead and focus back on the moon now that we've got a another encounter. And this one might actually be more in my favor because... Ah, dang it, I missed the, uh, the maneuver again. All right, I got it. Okay, we're going to go... Oh, buckets. I don't want to go through the planet. That's... Uh, or not planet. The moon is not a planet. The moon is a moon. Doing moon things. Alright, yeah, we're gonna have to wait until I think we get to a spot halfway through our uh, transfer to make the adjustment. But I want this to be either north or south so we can put it in a nice, clean, comfortable polar orbit. So we'll whip this guy around. Not going past our maneuver node. That would be bad. Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, almost went. Oh, yeah, we're, we're kind of too far because I'm missing my optimal burn. Oh, well. can't do what we can all right this thing is gonna have to go for how long does it burn oh it's like a two minute burn holy buckets okay well um i'm not gonna talk for two minutes so i'm just gonna speed up the footage and you can watch this beautiful thing ride off into the sunset for a brief amount of time still got about 20 seconds where our apoapsis is at here. Be coming in pretty hot pretty soon. All right, I'm going to shut off the burn. And then we're going to 
Well, too far. Oh, crap. I meant to do that really slowly and monotonously. Let's just undo that real quick and burn retrograde. There we go. Close enough. All right. Not looking for perfection on this one. And then we'll just quickly set up a mid-course correction. This should be nice and easy from here. We'll keep going... Uh, oh, not that far. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Helps if you make the sound effects. There we go. Okay, we'll line this up. Uh, again, going for a polar orbit like we did with our last altimetry scanner. Yeah, okay, so that'll be a good, good point to come in. This has a lot more radio control, so we don't have to worry about finagling like we did with these altimetry scanner. And then all I'm going to do... Quickly check. This burn is in one day and three hours. The boomerang's escape trajectory is going to have it exiting Kerbin Sphere of Influence in one day, eight hours. So this will actually happen before that point. So we'll go ahead and speed up one more time till we get to this burn. And I did the thing where I go too far again. It's a good thing these aren't like super, super, like mega accurately necessary burns or anything. Perfect. Golden. All right, then we can go ahead and set one more alarm for a sphere of influence change for this vehicle, which is in four days, eight hours. We'll go ahead and add that. And I'm going to actually edit this and change the name. And I'm going to say Brightwood 2 MOI, which stands for Moon Orbital Insertion Maneuver. That's uh, that's what we're going to do at that time frame. Go ahead and save that. And then, uh, because we only got three hours until the boomerang makes its triumphant escape out of the urban system, we need to figure out where where that thing is. Actually, if we if we let this satellite right now uh, continue on its way, it would actually go flying out of the uh, Kerbin system as well. What do you know? Alright, but the boomerang is way over here, so we're just going to go ahead and switch to that really quickly. And here it is. Let's see. Where is... Where's Kerbin? That's Eve. I don't want Eve. Did I... Well, I was kind of on a weird inclination with this. So where... Oh, there we are. Way up there. There is... There is Kerbin... Yeah, that's Kerbin right there, but I don't know. I thought I'd be able to maybe see the moon or something, but it doesn't look like there's other bodies around here, maybe. What's this? Oh, there's Jewel, actually. A little green, little green gem. Um, actually, this thing's in a really bad position now that I see it, because the solar panel is not exactly, exactly in a great position now that I see it. I'm not too fond of that. I don't think I put backup solar panels on it. Can I rotate this? I don't think this thing has any control. I didn't, I didn't put any kind of wheel authority on this at all. Well, that's not good. Anyways, um, we'll go ahead and wait until uh, the three hours passes. So we're going to speed this up. We'll walk, keep an eye on our Kerbal alarm clock. Should get there in a GIF, and it'll slow us down automatically. And we should get an accomplishment out of this by escaping Kerbin's gravitational influence. Let's see what happens. Alarm date, yes. Have we escaped? Did, did, did we do the escaping? No, apparently we still have 40 seconds until we're actually doing the escaping. Okay, let's speed it up. Come on, I haven't... I haven't got all day. Do the escapes. Please do the escapes. Boom. We have escaped. We have officially left Kerbin's sphere of influence. World's first milestones. Of course, I'm not going to get as much cash for them because they're a first milestone that doesn't involve the moon. So unfortunately, our strategy gives us uh, not as much money as we would have hoped for. But for science is pretty good. I'm okay with that. 14,000 on the uh, chunk of change. And now we can start doing science outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Conduct Materials study bay. Those words came out in the wrong order. Materials study while in space high over sun. The high radiation environment caused a few of the samples to glow. It looks like it would be fun to paint the rocket with this. That would be pretty cool. Well, for now, let's go ahead and keep it. We're going to get 19.4 science because we are sending it back via transmission. I was hoping to recover these. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have nearly enough fuel because of the poor launch trajectory that this thing took. We'll go ahead and do a temperature scan. Measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible as there's no matter around either hot or cold, except the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. This is probably going to give the R&D guys something to really think about for a while. 12.8, uh, pretty good to be able to transmit. Uh, atmospheric data, the instrument reads zero, of course, because we're still in a vacuum. And then mystery goo, are we going to get some jiggle? You know, the ghoul feels right at home. That's good too, I suppose. All right, well, we're going to try and transmit the data. I don't know how my batteries are going to do during this. 
And the answer is we had plenty for the mystery goo. And we're, we're, we are charging, but very slowly because of this just horrible, horrible angle I'm at right now. We're going to speed this up so we get our battery charging. I don't really care about how long this takes. don't have much going on except for, you know, the Brightwood uh, Moon Orbital Insertion in four days. All right, let's do the material study because this one's going to be worth the most amount of science, I believe. 19.4. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Hopefully we have enough battery to pull that off and a boarding transmission because it takes more than that full battery. I was hoping this would be enough battery to do it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to allow partials and then we got to let this recharge one more time. Battery recharged, review the data, transmit it now. So this might disrupt exactly whether or not we get full 19.7 out of it, but uh, we need to get something back from this. We'll speed up time so we get the charging done that's uploaded perfect and then uh, let's go ahead and keep time warp going so we're refilling where did my other there we go thermometer view transmit barometer 19.2 Ooh, this might uh, use up all of our battery too. transmit and this is exactly the chunk of change in science i wanted 87.1 we'll be able to get that node we've been having our eyes on and we've also gathered the first scientific data from the sun itself. All right, well, this little thing did its job spectacularly. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this was a raging success. We've got a couple of missions in progress. We do have to, in the next episode, check to see how our spectral scan of the biomes of Kerbin is completed. So we can transmit that data. And then we will set up the insertion burn for the Mooner version of that same mission. And check out some science nodes that we can now research as well. But until then... I am Kyle, and this has been that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program Forging Frontiers, the JNSQ playthrough. I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.